All right, we're going through the roll up in the second etch now. So we've already completed our first etch and now we're prepping for the roll up in the second etch. So here's some of the materials that we're gonna be needing. And so I have some of this stuff already, but uh, first off, what we are gonna be doing here is we need to make space, make sure the plate is taped down, uh, make sure we have space for the roller uh, and for the ink slab that we're gonna be putting down. And I've got to start here, we're following the law. So the law is lithotene, asphaltum, and then water. So I'm putting on a little bit of lithotene here using a paper towel. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remove all my old grease and all my old uh, drawing materials from the image. Remember, we have a bit of like this, a stencil that we're working with here. So the gum Arabic has created a stencil around the grease. So even though it looks like the, the drawing is smearing and removed all over the image, it is only being pulled out of the areas where the gum Arabic has not created that stencil. So it's really only where we drew. Then I'm gonna be using the asphaltum next. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that onto the surface of the paper towel. And then I used a tiny bit of lithotine to loosen that up if the asphaltum is stiff and spread that around to where I create a nice film over the entire surface of the drawn area. It doesn't really matter in the borders. And then I can let that kind of sit and dry while I prep the roller and my ink slab or my ink font. So I'm using the leather roller from, which you can grab from this section here. If they say tallow on them, they have not, they're not ready for use. Um, and I first have to unwrap the roller from the aluminum foil that is kind of keeping it um, moist. So the aluminum foil, the leather rollers, unlike the rubber rollers are they constantly have ink in them. Once once we start using them, these rollers are all pretty, have been around for quite a while. So we have to protect them and make sure that the, the ink isn't drying out and becoming all plasticky. So what I'm gonna do first here is I'm gonna roll out and see how much ink is actually already in this roller. So my, my ink font or my ink slab is going to be no larger than my roller is wide in either direction. So I'm gonna get here, I'm working with the roll up ink, which is in the cabinet, and I'm gonna pull that out, and that's the ink that I'm gonna be using for the roll up. So make sure when you pull this out that you do not gouge. So you can see that I keep the palette knife really flat, and I'm kind of rotating the can to collect the ink up. When I pull the ink out, I kind of roll it so it's not dripping over the edges. Do not gouge the ink. Uh, it creates like hard, rubbery areas down the ink. So now um, I'm working that up because I want to kind of loosen up the ink before I, I start rolling it out. I have the guide of how big my slab is because I was trying to roll the ink out. So I make a, an X here and then I'm rolling this forward until I even this all out. What I'm looking for is a nice velvety surface. So, and you can see what I'm explaining here is that when I roll, I roll forward, bring it back, rotate the roller with every, every turn here. Because you, if you only roll up and back, up and back without rotating the roller, you're only hitting like half of the roller with an ink slab this size. You can see that I keep a nice square here, the ink doesn't need to extend beyond this bit, otherwise you're just rolling up glass and spreading ink on glass that you need to use for your plate. So now that that slab is ready, I'm gonna be moving on to water. So this is the W in law. So I'm starting with a pretty soaked paper towel. This is kind of taking on the excess gum Arabic that's left behind as well as some of that excess uh, asphaltum that didn't go into the stencil. I use one that just gets soaked. I'm going to throw that away. And then I use another that isn't quite as wet to take up most of that film. And then I can move on to my sponge. I want to make sure that I'm never 
really soaking this because if I have too much water on the surface of this, it's going to reject the ink when I go to roll it with this leather roller. So it's really just damp. It is not soaking wet. So then I can bring the roller over after it's been charged up and roll it back and forth at a nice even pace. If I roll too many times, there's a chance that the, the plate rolls uh, dries out and then I get what is called a dry roll where the ink is going where I do not want it because there's no water to reject the ink in certain areas. So once again, keeping this nice and damp, but not soaking wet, you don't see like streaks of water on here. And I'm rolling from multiple directions to make sure that if there is any variance in the, the roller or in the, the glass, if the glass is uneven, I might be hitting areas at a different rate. Um, so I'm making sure I'm hitting it from multiple angles and I'm trying to roll this up until it is as dark as I drew it. So I'm looking for it to be just as dark as I drew it and potentially just a tiny bit darker because when it prints, it tends to print a little bit lighter than what we see on the plate. So I'm continually rolling that um, until it gets to that level. Typically, this is going to take at least four or five trips to the slab. I'm already seeing stuff that looks really similar to what, what I drew. And now I'm going to show you an example of what to do if I accidentally roll the plate uh, for too long or I dry roll it to where it starts scumming up. And you can tell very obviously when this happens. So right now it's still moist enough that it's rejecting ink. But as I just keep rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling, what you'll start to see is that the dark areas are getting darker and there's this buildup of black and scumming in areas where you don't want it. And so you don't freak out here. All you have to do is once again hit it with water. And then we're going to do what is called a snap roll. So I'm I'm rolling really fast and it's the snap back that's really important that's going to pull ink off. So this does not your, ruin your image. You do not want to keep doing this or having to do this. So it's important that you keep it moist, but it's not the end of the world. If it happens, we can always pull that back. So now I'm happy with where my image is. So it should be ready now for the second etch. So to get it ready for the second etch, first I need to fan it dry because I don't want any of that water on the surface. So when I say dry, just dry, I'm, I'm sponging off there because there was a little bit of ink scumming down at the bottom from that dry roll I did. I just wanted to make sure that was gone before I dry off the plate. So I'm using one of the fans, hand fans. Once it is dry, I'm ready for my second etch. So I will repeat the steps from our first etch video.